Hello everybody, Steve here, CSC. I have a very important message for uh, the pastors of this country, of the United States. And it's gonna be a little tough to listen to, so I'm warning you ahead of time. Uh, we're living in a day and age, if you are aware of anything that is going on, uh, where things are just going uh, crazy. You know, of course, you have the, the shootings and the mass shootings and the crime and gang violence uh, in the cities. And, and you also have a host of uh, agendas going out there. Uh, this this month is uh, Gay Pride Month. Uh, the LGBTQ narrative is impacting our young people, our students at school. We are basically, we basically are in a situation of spiritual warfare on all fronts. And it is a, a dire time in our communities. And we need really pastors to step up. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of pastors who are stepping up. Many of the pastors are doing their own thing. And I've recorded a number of vi videos about narcissism in the church and narcissistic pastors. Uh, some of my earlier videos were on that and you guys are still listening to them. So I thank you for that. Check them out if you, if you want. Um, but there is a great lack of real preaching, gospel preaching in the church. There is a lack of pastors who will stand up. Many pastors unfortunately folded during the pandemic and they allowed the, the state, the government to basically tell them what to do, to close, to, you know, do this and do that and not perform our mission. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, many pastors, I guess, were fearful of the repercussions, uh, fearful of the virus. And I'm not saying that one should not be cautious and do what they can to mitigate the situation. But uh, churches used to be the most important part of a community. They used to be the backbone of a community. And when everything else went awry, the churches were there to provide the backbone, especially spiritually, of a community. And because the, spirit, the, the spiritual warfare is often not seen, it is regarded as unimportant. And pastors, unfortunately, have skirted on their responsibility to be uh, uh, pillars of the community in terms of their knowledge and wisdom of God's word. They have uh, put down their responsibility to preach the gospel of grace and reconciliation and peace and have opted to be preachers whose uh, primary uh, idea of authority is having power over people being narcissistic, preaching the prosperity gospel, uh, where they seek to uh, get their own selves rich and conjole you to give to get. It's a give to get scheme. And, you know, it should not be a wonder why the largest pastors in this country are people who subscribe to this uh, fake gospel. And uh, it is a complete aberration. It is leading people astray. And it sounds good, but these people shouldn't be called pastors. They should be, they should be called uh, something else, um, but not pastors. And you should avoid people like this. Uh, you know, churches are in, in our communities follow, try to follow the, the social narrative uh, to try to remain relevant in their communities. Um, you know, they perform uh, gay marriages. They they allow um, their pastors to be LGBTQ. And, you know, I'm wondering, since when did the Bible allow for people, people's sexual preference to determine what they do or, or, or you know, de determines their viability for uh, ministry. So we have the Bible. The Bible tells clearly tells us what we should and shouldn't do. 
and yet these pastors claim authority over what God says and do what they want to do. And that's not good for the church. I think at some point it ceases being church and perhaps it becomes a social club. I don't know, but I wouldn't call it a church if the church is not doing what God commanded. If you want to know how God feels about churches, read the first three books of Revelation and there you will get a good idea of what God seeks and requires from a church. So read that for yourselves. Uh, pastors also get caught up in there might be some that are wanting to do good, but because their salary comes from the church, their living expenses, they feel like they don't want to rock the boat. They're too fearful to to do what they need to do because of their situation and they don't want to be fired or they don't want to be brought up before the board. And uh, they're actually fearful to do what they need to do and say what they need to say. I remember a time when I was a younger man, you would go to church and you would actually feel like the pastor knew everything about you. Of course he didn't, but when he was preaching, those words were hitting you and were convicting you and they were edging you on to be better, do better, and and to learn and to repent and to uh, get on the straight and narrow. I don't think we have many preachers like that today. If you do have one, thank God for him, pray for him, and you know, make sure you support the ministry because you have a very rare commodity. Uh, unfortunately, most of the pastors, and especially in the black community, you guys are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I would rather you leave the office, leave, give up being a pastor, than for you to mess things up for God's people, because it'd be better for you that way. So I'm sorry to come out with such a terse message, but there are so many things happening in our world today. There is evil everywhere. And we need good pastors. We need good men and women of God to stand up against this this day. Uh, Christians are being persecuted in this country. We are being associated with all kind of, of movements. They're trying to change the language. Um, but make no mistake, uh, the left and, and those who uh, hate Christians, that is their overriding objective to get rid of Christianity in America. And right now they're doing a good job. I don't want to be pessimistic, but I have to be truthful with you. And what we need now are churches that will stand up. We need men and women of God who will speak the truth um, and allow God and the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. That's what we need. Not these phony fake churches whose agenda is nothing. So many churches I know, they don't really talk to the people about what is going on and how the gospel can affect change and how the gospel is more powerful than any worldview that is out there and able to save and able to turn lives around. You have very few preachers doing that and that's what we need. No more of this nonsense, no more of this, you know, give to get schemes and prosperity gospel. No more of these narcissistic pastors who think they're kings and ruling over God's people. If you're a pastor, you're a servant. If you're a pastor, you are supposed to dedicate yourselves to the, pre the preaching and the ministry of the word. You are to oversee the flock, make sure that they are uh, abiding by the word. The scripture says, make disciples of men. And when you do that, you're doing a job well done. So if you're a pastor, you need to repent, do so. If you're a pastor and you can't do this, then you know you need to step aside and let somebody else come in who will do it. It is, a time, it is time now, there's no more games. We gotta get serious about our faith. So please share this message. If you know a pastor, please send it to him. Um, you know, I, I make no bones about saying these things. And uh, if you want to send it to them, they can respond to me directly if they, if they need to. Uh, otherwise, I'm praying that this message will make a difference and that we'll have some, some strong pastors who will stand up to the culture. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.